there. Now, first of all, it's the same God, okay? God of Islam and God of the Old Testament. It's the same, Allah is the same as the God of the, it's the same. So hold that aside for the moment. Hold that aside. What he did not know is that of all stars that have names, two thirds of them have Arabic star names, okay? He, you know, here they go. I mean, it just goes on and on and on and on. Not all stars have names, but two thirds of those that do have names have Arabic names. There we go, okay? There they go. And you might say, well, how did this come to pass? What, where did that come from? What was going on? Because if you think of the Middle East now, and it's not where, you're not saying, hey, these are folks naming stars. You go back a thousand years, Islam, 800 to 1100. In that period, which is generally called the golden age of Islam, of Islamic science, golden age, true, go there was no greater golden age in the history of the world before or after. When you look at the sum of advances that came out of that period in Baghdad, algebra was invented in that period. Algebra is itself an Arabic word. Algorithm is an Arabic word. Our numerals are Arabic numerals. You ever wonder why? You ever stop and think why they're called Arabic numerals? In that period, mathematics took great leaps and bounds. Agriculture, engineering, medicine, navigation. 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 Star maps were made to assist navigation. Astrolabes were, create, were crafted. Then it all stopped. It ended. It ended. If you're a historian, typically you, are, you're, you, are, you focus on history as marked by changes of kings and leaders and wars. That's the lens through which many historians look at the past. And so if you ask people, they'll say, oh, the Mongols sacked Baghdad, and so that's why it all ended. If that were the only force operating, then later, when the Islamic culture rose, you would still see this tradition of scientific um, uh, uh, innovation. But it has not recovered. It has not come back at all compared to what was going on in that 300 years. And what you do is you, you read the writings of al-Ghazali, who is a, a Muslim cleric, and he, he was to Islam what St. Augustine was to Christianity. What he did was he taught you how to be a good Muslim. He taught you how to read the Quran and how to obey the commands. That, because back then, people were just interpreting it for themselves. He came along. He was a, an academic scholar. He interpreted the Quran. He said, this is how you must do it. First has social influence and then political and cultural influence and basically his interpretation took over. And in that interpretation, it included the perspective that the manipulation of numbers is the work of the devil. This cuts the kneecaps out of any mathematical advances that would unfold. Math is the language of the universe. If you take that out of your personal equation, you no longer contribute to the advance of human understanding of that universe. And that absence of Muslim presence in the frontier of science persists to this day. Take a look at the Nobel Prize from 1900 to 2010. I can do this, do this for the, for the Jews, for example. How many Jews in the world? There's like 15 million tops, tops, 15 million out of seven billion people. These are the numbers of Jews who have won the Nobel Prize in the Sciences. 25% of the Nobel Prizes. We have a Jewish person in the audience, congratulations, okay, <laughs> fine, okay. <laughs> this is rightly something to be extraordinarily proud of. The traditions of Jews in the 20th century is one of, of education and scholarship. Uh, in earlier centuries, it was one of very strict sort of, uh, um, uh, a study of the Torah, 
did not involve the natural world. This was a later emergence of the Jewish culture to exhibit this. Let's look at the numbers for Islam. So these are Jews. There are 15 million Jews, 25% of the Nobel Prizes. There is 1.3 billion Muslims in the world. These are the numbers. Two and a half. Okay, I'll give you three if you really want to include economics as a full number there, okay? <laughs> if you got to give it a full number, okay, I'll, okay. <laughs> now, for me, by the way, you can analyze this in any number of ways. There are 50 times the number of Nobel Prizes, 180th the population, there's 4,000 times the impact. I lose sleep at night with the question, how many secrets of the universe lay undiscovered? Because 1.3 billion people who in an ancestral time would have participated in this enterprise and are now not. That's what I think of as a scientist. Whole populations. By the way, there are other populations that never contributed. I'm not going to them and blaming them. I'm talking about a population that already did contribute. It's in, it's in the cultural heritage already. All we're asking is to resurrect it. It, is, it has not happened. So